Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Let's Play of Hidden Mysteries, The Fable Voyage of Titanic. Or, to keep it short, Hidden Mysteries Titanic. When we last left off, um, we are at Chapter 6, I believe. And in the last chapter, you have the choice to either go with uh, Emma, the mother, or Robert, the husband. I decided to choose Robert, the husband. And the last time I did Emma, uh, the mother, was on a Twitch stream. So, yeah. So, what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to figure out... I'm trying to figure out where I'm supposed to do. Um... Oh yes, I need to go to the gallery. But the problem is... Nobody's answering. I think the staff locked all the doors once they were sure nobody was inside. I need to talk to Thomas. Thomas! Margaret, I mean, Mrs. Ashley, why aren't you in a boat yet? I need to get into my husband's stateroom. Good luck with that. They're locking all the doors as they clear people out. They don't want anyone going back after a trinket. It's no trinket I'm after. Do you have the key to my husband's stateroom? Me? No, I was in charge of staff rooms only. I have the key to the galley. Can I have it? Oh, well, I suppose so. Thank you, Thomas. Okay, so now we go to the galley. Key, meet door. <laughs> <laughs> what a sorry state the kitchen is in. It looks like a tornado's been through here. I know. Um, right now, the kitchen is flooded, but not all the way through. So we're going to a hidden object scene to get um, the meat cleaver. Everything else is randomized, so let's go ahead and find these objects. Oh dear. I apologize for the misclick. I was trying to click the bun, like a cinnamon bun, but... You accidentally see the Maya uh, values. Now I have to tell you something that uh, I just overslept. I accidentally overslept. But regardless of that, I am very happy to wake up at this time. Because I really need to get this recording done. And I still need to get the room straightened because the cleaning people will be arriving um, on Monday. And for that, I meant like... Um, hold on. I'm trying to find the objects that I'm looking for. Um... I would like to apologize for the mis- uh, for the mis- um, not the miscommunication, but the mis- like, exception of what I say. Um, in- by the time, uh, I have to finish cleaning my room, because there are some cleaning people that will be arriving on Monday, but here's the thing. Uh, I am recording this on June 12, 2024, but this video is going to be premiered on July. And that's simply because I'm trying to be able to have time to premiere a lot of videos in each month, you know? And it's not easy for me to keep up, especially if my concern is that I won't be able to make videos for YouTube, especially if I'm doing uh, regular work, which is something that I'm not looking forward to because I don't like to work extra hours and so because I won't be able to have time to do that and making videos. Which is why I'm hoping that there is another way, you know. But I'm not going to worry about that. 
because there's still a lot of business to deal with in order to, you know. I need to find a screw. There we go. And I'm going to have to use this last hand. Well, not the last hand. Because it isn't the last hand. Alright, so now we get to go here. And this room isn't flooded. But, what we need to do... Is we need to click this. And then we gotta do this. This knife will cut through just about anything. I'll just pocket the nozzle. Alright. So we're going to... We're going to pick up this chunk of ice. I'm going to go back here. And we're going to use it with the... Um, to break the glass to get the axe. And that's where we need to go to Robert's room. Now where did Robert get off to? Uh-oh. That's not good. A tad unconventional, but you must admit it got the job done. Indeed it did. This place is falling apart. The place is falling apart. And we're going to use this. The jet of water doused the fire. This water doused the fire. Still a bit warm. We're using this poker. Use the poker on... Let's see. That's the lockbox where Robert keeps his money. But without the key, I'll need to find another way to open it. Okay, so that is the lockbox. I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time since I played this game. I was able to pry open the lockbox, but the force has thrown the banknotes all over the room. That means we have to go to another hidden object scene to collect the banknotes. I'm... I also need to walk uh, soon before it gets too late. Okay, so now we got the bank notes, so we need to go to the lifeboat. Robert, where have you been? You disappeared. I thought you came back up here, but I couldn't find you anywhere. Did you find my money? Yes, it was in your room. Well, let's have it. Here, it's all that was in there. Excellent. This should do the trick. Mrs. Ashley, there's a boat with a space that needs filling. You'd best step on over to the threshold. What about my husband, Robert? Women and children first, Mom. Don't you worry, Margie. Go on ahead. Young Thomas and I are going to have a little chat. Are you sure, Robert? I've talked my way out of worse. Don't give it another thought. Just stay warm. I will. I... Please, please stay safe, Robert. I couldn't live without you. Nor I you, my dear. Now get going. They won't hold that place for you forever. Goodbye, Robert. I'll see you soon, Mrs. Ashley. This one's definitely pretty short. I always thought I needed a powerful husband to lift me from my meager beginnings into something grander. I never thought I might do it on my own. But she always had faith in me. She always told me I could do or be anything I wanted. And I know that in her heart, she really believed that to be true. 
she couldn't have been more wrong. My mother was gone, but perhaps I could still pick up the pieces. I had Robert, and I had my newly christened sisterhood, those who survived. There, shivering in those lifeboats, our eyes transfixed by the horror before us. We were attending a mass funeral for those who were not yet dead. It was our lot to remember them to the rest of the world. Well, that was unfortunate. So, if you play uh, with uh, Emma's chapter, then Robert is like gone and stuff. However, however, if you, however, in Robert's chapter, then the mother is gone, which is very sad. It kind of reminds me about my mom passing away, and it's just really hard for me. I could have chosen Emma, the mother, since I'm so sensitive about this, um, this mother situation, but it's like, I just want to show you what happens if you choose one of the endings. Unfortunately, I cannot go back and replay that, um, main game to show you, uh, Emma's ending, just to make up for it, but... Regardless of that, it, it is what it is, but we still have one more thing to do. We must go to the bonus uh, content. The bonus level. 90 years later. 90 years later. So many things went wrong aboard Titanic. Many believe we were ill-fated, doomed right from the start. I don't agree. A man makes his own fate. The mistakes leading to the Titanic disaster were simple, straightforward, and easily remedied, like so many things are with the benefit of hindsight. If I could go back, what would I change? What would I do differently? Where would I even begin? I don't know. We cannot pick up this rod here because of the eel. So what we need to do is pick up these gloves. Enough gunk has called the surface of these gloves home that they could probably withstand a bite or two. Let's just move Snappy out of the way. Okay, that's where we need the gloves for. To get rid of the um get rid of the eel. Then we pick up the rod. The next thing that we need to do here is we need to head to this, um, the captain's sitting room. Determining a ship's course is far from an exact science, but science does play its part. Currents, weather systems, and other fairly predictable impediments are accounted for as much as possible. Without a doubt, crossing so near Newfoundland was a concession made for the sake of time. A more southerly route would have presented far fewer hazards at the cost of a few additional hours of travel. The risk was deemed acceptable by those at a higher pay grade than I. I want to know how he'd be able to talk while underwater. Maybe he was just narrating while we were in a, uh, a sunken ship with our diving mask or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any logics, but we're going to go to this hypnotic scene. And we're going to collect the push pins. Come on. There you go. I've collected all the course plotting pins. Now put them back where they were before Titanic sunk. Or rather, where they should have been. 
Well, you know what that means? That means we get to solve a puzzle. This is the map we used to plot our initial course, and all subsequent course changes and corrections. Oh yeah, we have to do this way. Alright, so the solution to this is... Okay. It's the solution. There we go. Not that hard, but... I could have made such a course change, but in all honesty, there was no predictive cause for it. Had we received a warning message by wireless, it would have been done without question. But there was no such message, and so we plowed ahead full steam towards our collective fate. Okay, there we go. There's the, the captain's sitting room. This is what it looks like. Uh, we need to go to the Macarene the receiver room. At the time of Titanic's fateful voyage, the wireless radio was still considered a newfangled contraption. No sailor worth his salt relied on them much. They were an adjunct, not a necessity. This was short-sightedness on our part. The wireless transmitter and receiver aboard Titanic was not even owned by the White Star Line. It was owned by a private company, and it was their charge to serve the passengers, not the crew. When forced to choose between relaying a message about the stock market to an investor or a message about weather conditions, the missive to the passenger was always given priority. And so it was that we missed an important message in regard to icebergs in our direct path. Okay, we can't go back to the sitting room because it's already been done, I believe. Uh, what we need to do is that we need to go here. And we have another hidden object scene. This time we got to collect torn pieces of paper. Oh, a message. A recommended course change. You would think this message would have warranted some serious attention. And I think it's going to be placed here. Had we received that message, Titanic would have almost certainly made it to New York Harbor without incident. I cannot blame the Marconi operators. They were simply following their own <laughs> orders. The system was to blame, and although the tragedy of Titanic was instrumental in fixing the very system that doomed her, it is the wish of every captain that such cautionary tales not be woven on their watch. So it goes. This is what it looks like uh, before it sunk. You won't be able to go back here again. So now Titanic's we outer hull was comprised of thousands of sheets of riveted steel. It was quite literally a patchwork of metal. It sounds a little disconcerting, but this was the only method of shipbuilding on that scale available at the time. Had the rivets been hot stamped, that is to say, had the steel that they were driven into been heated after they were stamped, the joints between plates wouldn't have been so susceptible to the cracks that allowed the ice to penetrate as deeply as it did. Just another simple step that could have saved hundreds of lives. Mm. What I was trying to say is that we have to go to the baggage, uh, what is it called? The baggage hold. And we have another hidden object scene. This time we have to collect these rivets, which almost look like screws, but not. Except the bottom part is not like twisted, you know. No mention about these little things? Well, okay. 
So we gotta place two things in here. That's where they belong. But they need something substantial to keep them in place under the pressure. I believe it's this one. This seems like it should have been standard procedure. Titanic was separated into 15 watertight bulkheads, but the word watertight is a little misleading. They were really only watertight from bow to stern. The tops were open, like gigantic cups. Titanic could have remained afloat indefinitely with breaches in four of the 15, but even with five breaches, Titanic should have stayed afloat well into the next day. The real problem that night was one of location. The breaches occurred in the first five contiguous bulkheads at the front of the ship. This caused the bow of the ship to dip down enough that water spilled over the top wall of the next bulkhead in mine. This caused a domino effect. The oh, bow dipped thanks. further down, allowing the next bulkhead to be breached, and so on. Alright, so you probably think that that should be the end. Well, not quite, because we still got one more room. And that's the wheel room, which I totally forgot that we're supposed to place something here. There. Still fits, even after all this time. And then, voila. We shouldn't have been running full steam in waters we knew to be notorious for icebergs. Mm -hmm. That much is certain. Had we decreased our speed by half, even if nothing else had been changed, the iceberg impact would not have been likely to breach more than one or two bulkheads, and we could have stayed afloat for days. We wouldn't have lost a single person. We might not have even lost Titanic at all. This is how it goes. In retrospect, it was hubris that did Titanic in. From the financiers who didn't see the need for high-grade steel in the bulkheads, down to the very passengers themselves, who simply couldn't believe their world could be so easily crushed by nature's caprice. But it was I who sinned most egregiously. In the end, I was charged with navigating Titanic from Southampton to New York. But the sea was so calm, the air so clear, the atmosphere on board so very charged with excitement. There was a singular, palpable glee infecting us all alike. From the reclining elite on the upper decks to the suited, sweaty firemen toiling in the bowels. We were all taking part in history. We were the envy of the rest of the world. Hubris. We never stood a chance. This man talks a lot. But that is officially the end of this Let's Play called The Hidden Mysteries, The Faithful Voyage Titanic. I would like to apologize if I got a little bit sensitive about the ending part of the main game. It's because you have a choice to, uh, to go with Robert or Emma, uh, which it is the mother. And unfortunately, as you can tell, I cannot play the main game because, you know, it won't allow me to, which is very sad. Very sad indeed. How, however, I do have an idea. I will be recording this game for Daily Motion. And by the time I do, uh, the link will probably already been underneath the description down below, probably in this video. We're just going to have to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. We're just going to have to wait and see. But in the meantime, that is it for today's Let's Play. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned for more Let's Plays and other walkthroughs, playthroughs, and so forth. Um, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, be kind to others. Um, clean up our planets and all. And have a blessful, wonderful day.